Am I the asshole for refusing to let my family meet my daughter after all of them dropped out of my wedding upon finding out my wife was pregnant? I come from a conservative Christian family. All my family members were slash are involved in the church and have church-based jobs. When they met my wife, they loved her and embraced her as their own. We dated for two years and discovered she was pregnant after we got engaged. Invitations were already given at the time and we decided to still have the wedding on the date when my wife was five months in. My family was furious when they found out my wife was pregnant. They asked if we were even still considering having a wedding. I said why not, but they were very upset, especially my mom and dad, who said that they've always been known for their decency and good Christian values. And they weren't willing to let this stain their reputation, as in my wife and I getting married while pregnant. They officially dropped out and refused to negotiate, saying it was done and I have only myself to blame for this outcome and should have moved the wedding to out of town. I was hurt and I tried to change their minds and checked with other members, but my brother said he had no intentions to look like a joke in front of his fellow church members and dropped out too. My aunt pretended to be sick and said she may not be able to make it. She's 100% healthy. My cousin said he had a business trip and stopped his wife and kids from attending and my uncle cussed me out, tore up the invitation and kicked me out. I felt terrible with no family members of my own to support me and share my joy at my wedding. I even broke down crying after the ceremony. I haven't spoken to them for months and then got busy with my four-week-old daughter. My cousin reached out to hand me gifts and well wishes for the birth of my daughter sent from my family. I returned everything. He sat with me on behalf of my family and said I shouldn't have returned the gifts and that they were for my family who want to see and hopefully be involved in my daughter's life. He said my mom's longing to meet her grandbaby and everyone else is wanting to visit soon to celebrate my daughter's life. I said, wasn't my daughter the reason why the entire lot of them abandoned my wedding? My daughter at some point will ask about the wedding and I have no intentions on lying to her. He just started stuttering as I went on a about how they treated my daughter as someone to be ashamed of and hide. He replied saying he guaranteed I got it all wrong and no matter what goes down between us, I can never deny that my daughter is their granddaughter slash niece, etc. and that they're family. He asked that I arrange for them to visit, but I refused. My wife says I should let them come, but I still refuse. So am I the asshole? Story time about how I stole a famous celebrity's boyfriend. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I repeat, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. Growing up, I love the fashion industry and loved clothes. I knew I wanted to make that my job in the future. And just to let you guys know, I'm not the prettiest girl. I'm not anything special in terms of looks, but I'm pretty funny and I have a really great personality. When I was 16, I moved to New York to become a fashion stylist and I quickly started gaining traction. I became an intern at a really big fashion house and this helped me a lot. As you can imagine, I started meeting a a lot of celebrities and just really important people doing this. Although I never really got to style anybody, I was still in the room when they were there for fittings and different things. After a few years, I quit that internship and went into another company. This new company, I was getting paid more and I was just happier in general. And I was able to style a bunch of people on my own. I wasn't styling any celebrities or anything like that, but just basically people that worked in the industry and people that had different events to attend. But one day this celebrity comes in. And no, he's not an A-list or anything, but he's pretty famous. He came in with his girlfriend, who at the time was also famous. I basically had to style both of them for an event and it was really fun. But here's the thing. Clearly he thought I was really funny and we were making jokes back and forth. The fitting took longer than usual because we had some pieces coming in so we had to wait for them to come in for them to try it on. But she was clearly annoyed. Obviously waiting around for clothes is not the most fun thing, but at the same time we were giving them champagne, we ordered them amazing food, and she was literally getting her tushy kissed. I could tell that he was really embarrassed by her behavior. At one point, he even told her just to sit down and relax, which she did eventually. I left them alone for a few minutes before the clothes arrived. Once they arrived, I came in and I gave him the pieces. She literally ripped the dress out of my hand and went into the changing room. He looked at me and apologized and said, you know, she's just in a bad mood today. And I said, I totally understand. This was my job, so I knew I couldn't react any other way, but I wanted to slap her across the face. While she was changing, he started making small talk with me. I made a few jokes and it actually made him laugh, which I was really surprised and then he even complimented me about what I was wearing. I mean, I did look really good. <laughs> Once she came out of the dressing room, she started complaining right away about the fit. It didn't surprise me whatsoever, but at the same time, I just really couldn't believe how she was acting. Then I realized that she was probably jealous because he was talking to me. He was like going out of his way to talk to me. They finally left and he said bye. But two days later, he comes back by himself. He wanted me to sell him for an event coming up that weekend. And that's when I realized I needed to take advantage of the situation. I had the feeling he liked me, but I wasn't gonna come out and say it. So I turned up the charm 1000%. We talked for about two hours, so I knew I had to make my move now or it would be never. The fact that he came in two days later and by himself, that let me know that he liked me. Like I said in part one, he was there for a few hours. We totally hit it off. We even talked about each other's families and what our favorite foods were. So that's when I asked him if he wanted to have a quick dinner. Trust me, I was so nervous to ask him, but I knew I had to do it. And he said yes. We finally got to the restaurant and sat all the way in the back. I kind of got the feeling that he didn't want anyone to see us, but it made sense. 
That's when I asked about his famous girlfriend. Then he quickly apologized for her behavior and told me that she's never really liked that. And I told him that I'm used to being treated that way by celebrities. And he said that I didn't deserve that kind of behavior from her. That's when I asked him if he was happy with her. I could tell the question caught him off guard because he didn't really know how to respond. And that's when he told me that he was happy with her, but he didn't know if the relationship would actually go anywhere. We proceeded to have a few drinks and I could tell this was really loosening us up. Out of nowhere, I grabbed his hand and kind of massaged it, but he didn't pull it away. That just confirmed the fact that he liked me. Then he asked me for my phone number. We said goodnight and went our separate ways. But for the next week, he texted me every single day saying good morning. Of course, we would text pretty much all day long. I finally decided to tell him how I felt, which he obviously already knew. And he told me that he felt the same. Then he was the one that asked me out and we actually went to the beach. We were at the beach for about six hours and we had such a great time. At the end of the beach day, I kissed him and asked him if he really wanted to be with his girlfriend. He stayed quiet and didn't answer, but the following day he messaged me and told me that he broke up with her. Here's the bad news. We only dated for three weeks. On the third week, he actually broke up with me and told me he was dating someone else. I saw it coming. He's now dating another celebrity. Their relationship isn't public yet, but I have a feeling they're gonna announce it soon. I keep texting him and asking him to take me back. I was actually falling in love with him. What should I do, you guys? Classmate Bonnie was obsessed with seducing boys that already had a girlfriend. And when I caught her flirting with my boyfriend, TJ, I finally lost it. Get away from him, you pumpkin face. Oh, but he likes me so much. TJ, tell me, am I your favorite girl? I pushed her away and said, TJ, she is a tramp. Promise me to stay away from her. Oh, don't worry. She's harmless. But I know teenage boys think with their pants, not with their heads. I couldn't trust my boyfriend as long as Bonnie was around, and the other girls felt the same. So to get Bonnie under control, we all gossiped and excluded her. But it didn't work. It only drove her further to the boys. And they loved her, of course. She was thin, had a bubble butt, and always dressed like she was on spring break. Rumor had it she'd already slept with more than a hundred guys, even though she was only 16. But that's probably an underestimate. Once at a party, I saw her kiss 10 different guys within just an hour. It was so disgusting. And things escalated on our class camping trip. I looked out the window for one second, and Bonnie handcuffed herself to my boyfriend, TJ. Then she said she couldn't remember where the key was. I was furious and sat myself between them, but she kept tickling and touching TJ over my shoulder. Then our teacher forced me to change seats. Now I had to watch her fall asleep on TJ's lap, and it got worse. When we got to the cabins, it was already dark, and we couldn't find a hammer to destroy the handcuffs. So our teacher told TJ and Bonnie, You two just have to bunk together tonight. That's when I lost it and screamed, No! My boyfriend won't sleep next to that tramp! Don't stress, girl. I'll take extra good care of TJ. You'll see. He's such a good boy anyway. She started pawing at him, and I was about to kill her. I knew she would try to make out with him in their bed. And what if she took off her clothes and got naked? The next morning I woke up. My friends told me to check Bonnie's Instagram. Apparently she had posted a video with TJ. Hey, I'm here in bed with my new boyfriend. Isn't he a cutie pie? Bonnie had no shirt on while TJ was sleeping in her arms with lipstick kisses all over his face. I went to find a hammer so I could finally destroy the handcuffs. But that's when Bonnie said, Oh, I just remembered where the key is. It's right here in my pants. I grabbed the key, sprung them loose, and asked, What was that video on Bonnie's Instagram? Oh, that wasn't my fault. She kissed me while I was asleep. Oh, TJ, you liar. Why don't you tell her about the other things we did last night, you naughty boy? That night, all the guys went to a lake. Us girls weren't invited, but of course Bonnie disappeared with them. So I grabbed a flashlight and went hunting. I found the guys laughing around a bonfire when Bonnie sat down on TJ's lap and sucked his face. I was disgusted, but the guys were cheering her on. So I threw a stone at them and screamed, Get your dirty hands off him! But TJ stood up for Bonnie and said, You could have hurt someone with that stone. And relax, we were only playing a kissing game. Yeah, don't be such a prude. I'm prudish because I'm the type of girl you can marry someday. Bonnie's just a cheap toy you're going to use a few times and then dump in the trash. But I'm only 16. I don't want a serious relationship in any way. Bonnie's more fun than you. Oh, you really think that? I ran to our camp and used scissors to turn my jeans into hot pants and my t-shirt into a crop top. Then I went back and said, how do I look now? Wow, you look hot. Really? You like the way I look? Because I need your validation to feel good about myself. Can you please make out with me? Please? It was fun beating Bonnie at her own game. But she was a professional and outplayed me. Mind if I join you two? Sorry, but I can't risk getting an STD from you. Okay, girls. Calm down. Why don't we go back to my cabin for a duel to see which one of you is the better kisser? That's when I finally realized that my boyfriend didn't care about me one bit. 
I told him, it's over between us. I'm sure she already gave you her STDs, and I hope you both die of syphilis. But the rest of the trip, TJ was completely under Bonnie's spell, and she kept flaunting it in my face. Oh, babe, last night was so good. Can we go back to your bed? I rallied the other girls, and we ambushed them that night. First, we locked TJ into the bathroom. Then we tied Bonnie to a tree and taped her mouth shut. The girls held her still while I wrote man-eater across her forehead. It was fun until our teacher found out about it. She screamed, All you girls are suspended from school for two weeks. No, please don't suspend us. If Bonnie's the only girl left in our class, she will steal all our boyfriends. Bonnie didn't even try to wash off her man-eater tattoo. The guys thought it was funny, and she wore it like a badge of honor. Currently, I'm still suspended, but I've heard rumors that Bonnie makes out with up to five guys each break. I wouldn't be surprised if that was true. Whose fault is it? In sixth grade, I had a crazy bus driver, and there was crazy students on the bus as well. This caused some major problems. For reference, this was the third bus I moved to because the first one was far too crowded, the second one was a disability bus, but this bus was permanent for the rest of the year. Now, I had gotten on the bus after school, but the bus was crowded, so I didn't sit next to my friend, T, who was sitting near this boy. Keep him in mind. It was a normal bus ride, and so far no one had gotten off yet because we had just drove away from the school. I heard that boy T was sitting next to mumble something under his breath, but I was too far away to hear anything, and ignored it. Next thing I know, I heard people gasp, and I quickly interfered. I saw he punched T. I was too far away to help since I was in the front of the bus, and this was in the back. But then I saw T punch him back which started a punching frenzy. At this point, everyone ganged up on the boy since he hit a girl. We were all watching him. At this point, the bus driver had pulled over and cars were honking behind us. I was trying to understand what the bus driver was saying. I looked back and the boy was running up the fire escape. We couldn't believe it and people were laughing. Everyone was calming down, but we still pulled over. At this point, we had been pulled over for about 15 minutes and we were supposed to be home already. But the bus driver kept telling us that we couldn't leave until the police got there. We wanted to go home, so most of us already texted our parents to come get us. Yet, she insisted that we stay on the bus. Now, there were tons of parents on the sidewalk that the bus was pulled over near. Trying to pick up their kids, we were stuck in there. Some people started opening up the windows and yelling out to their parents. The door to the bus opened on accident and a bunch of kids trampled out, including my sister. But I was still stuck on the bus because she closed the door just in time. My parents started to catch on that I was stuck, and my dad and my sister were waiting. Mean was that we couldn't leave until the police got there. We wanted to go home, so most of us already texted our parents to come get us. Yet, she insisted that we stay on the bus. Now, there were tons of parents on the sidewalk that the bus was pulled over near. Trying to pick up their kids, we were stuck in there. Some people started opening up the windows and yelling out to their parents. The door to the bus opened on accident and a bunch of kids trampled out, including my sister. But I was still stuck on the bus because she closed the door just in time. My parents started to catch on that I was stuck and my dad and my sister were waiting. Meanwhile, the police are just watching all of this happen. So my dad and my sister started screaming, let her out. My dad started tapping on the window to let me out. And at this point, everything has been going on for over 30 minutes. I was finally let out, but it didn't end there. For weeks after, the bus driver openly talked about how much she hated my bus stop because T and I were in it. She talked about my dad and how he aggressively banged the door. Am I the asshole for telling my mom she's a bad mom? I, 15 female, have always had issues living with my mom. But it's not exactly her, it's her wife, or my stepmom. She's been in my life since I was very little, but she's always made my life a living hell. She manipulates me, she would laugh in my face and call me psycho. She would say I belonged in a mental asylum while I would have breakdowns in front of her. Let my sister choke me out right in front of her and do nothing. And she would laugh at me every time I walked into the same room as her. Or look at me up and down with disgust on her face. But. The final straw for me was when she walked in on me cutting and laughed, saying, I'm going to go tell your mom. Keep in mind that when all of this is happening, I was around the ages of 8 to 14. It only got worse till I moved out last year. I thought that would be the end of my problems, but I was wrong. Side note, my mom never really believed me when I said I was emotionally and verbally, ab emotionally and verbally abused while staying under her roof. So our conversations would go like this. I believe that stuff happened to you, but and add some bullshit excuse. Anyways, after I moved out at 14, I stayed with my grandma on my dad's side. My father's in jail. While staying there, my uncle came and lives with us too. I thought it was so cool because I needed that father figure in my life. I craved that attention. Well, long story short, he groomed me. And the day I found out, I was talking to my therapist. I called my mom bawling, but she didn't believe me. 
She kept dancing around the subject whenever I would ask for a direct answer like yes or no. So I told her, Mom, do you believe me, yes or no? And only use yes or no, nothing else. She said, yes, but... And before I could finish, I hung up and I texted her a paragraph on how bad of a mom she was for not keeping me safe and for allowing me to take all that abuse under her roof. And not only that, she, and for allowing me to take all that abuse under her roof. And not only that, she was a bad mom for also saying if any person laid a finger on me, she'd kill them. But she didn't do anything. She left me alone. So am I the asshole for telling my mom she's a bad mom? So the other day I get a call from my father. He asked me to check on my grandmother. I say, my grandmother, why? Why check on grandma? He says, because we haven't heard from her in a few days. And I was like, shit, I haven't heard from her in a few days either. On top of that, one of her best friends called my parents and said she couldn't get in touch with her, said her phone was turned off or unplugged and it was just going straight to voicemail. Weird, that's a little bit weird. So I drive over to my grandma, expecting the worst right she's only like 15 minutes away from my new place now um that was the longest drive of my life i've got my phone in hand ready to call 911 thinking maybe she'd fallen downstairs maybe there was an intruder maybe she got stuck in the bathtub i don't know i'm expecting the worst so as soon as i pull into the driveway i keep my car running i run to the door i knock 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 real quick open the door very abruptly i'm like grandma 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 it's me I did not expect this. I did not expect what came next because what I hear from the other room is a very quick fuck. And then she comes barreling around the corner with, with her walker, mind you, um, and pushes me out the door. And then it hits me, a huge wave of marijuana smoke. <sighs> so we talk outside for a little bit and she's like, I'm gonna kill Lynn, who's her friend. I'm gonna fucking kill her. I don't know how i'm going to and i just can't stop smiling because my grandmother is she's like the sweetest person ever but i really really was expecting her to be on the ground um like on her last breaths of life uh but no she just unplugged her phone and was trying to get high The way I found out my boyfriend is cheating is actually by what he said in his sleep. So we were laying in bed and in his sleep he said a girl's first and last name. And usually when people are sleep talking you know it's hard to make out or it just doesn't really make sense. No, this was clear as day. Straight out of a movie. So I get out of bed and I look up this girl on Facebook and I notice that she's married and she has kids so I don't really think too much of it. And when he wakes up in the morning, I ask him about her and he was like, oh, it's just some girl I went to high school with. But I wasn't fully convinced, so I messaged the girl and I was like, hey, I'm so-and-so's girlfriend. I was just wondering if you guys have talked recently. And the way she responded is what put me even more on edge. She was like, you need to mind your own business. You're just his crazy ex-girlfriend. And I'm like, excuse me, I am not his ex-girlfriend. He's living in my house. I am paying for his phone bill. He drives my car to work. He's very much my boyfriend. Well, then I get this message from a completely different girl. So at this point, I decide to do a little bit more digging. Since it's only my name on the phone plan, I'm able to view all of the phone calls from all of the phones on that line. So I start looking through his phone calls and I notice a 45 minute phone call with a number I didn't recognize. So when I asked him about this, he was like, I've never even made a 45 minute phone call. The phone company must have made a mistake. Yeah, okay. At this point, this is all the proof I need. So I'm like, you need to leave, you need to get out. And he's giving me this huge sob story about how he has nowhere to go. Honestly, not my problem. You should have thought about that before. So a couple of days later, I'm texting him and I'm asking for the phone back. He told me that he already talked to a cop about it and he's not giving me my phone back because there's nothing I can do. 
So there may have not been anything I could do to get it back, but I decided to report the phone stolen. So at least that way he couldn't use it either. And he had actually left his car at my house. So he told me when he came to pick up the car, he would also give me the phone. I'm like, okay, perfect, that works for me. It's the day after he's supposed to pick up the car and I haven't heard from him. So I'm trying to reach out to him and I am blocked on absolutely everything. So what do I do? Yep, I totally should. I had to pay over $1,200 to cancel the phone line early and to get a new phone. So it brought me a little joy that he was at least inconvenienced by this as well. When I posted this on my TikTok last time, he had actually commented on the video and then tried to make a video on his TikTok trying to defend himself. But he deleted the TikTok before I could ever see. Everyone in the comments were telling me that it made him look even more guilty. And since you guys had his TikTok, you guys were blowing up his comments. And I posted a screenshot on my Instagram of some of those comments you guys left. But I always say, what goes around comes around. Story time. And this is a really freaky story. And I've tried to share it before on TikTok. But after I shared it, some really weird things started happening to me. So I deleted it. But I'm going to try again. Um, everyone's name has been changed just for safety reasons. <laughs> But okay, here goes. Again, it's really freaky. Be ready. Two years ago, my friend named Ashley was in London for a work thing. She normally was in a different country. But so she was in London for a work thing and so I told her that she could stay with me. This one night, Ashley decided to meet up with her friend John, who she hadn't seen in a few years because John also lived in London. So Ashley and John went for dinner. At dinner, everything was fine. Everything was completely normal. And halfway through, Ashley went to the bathroom. When she came back from the bathroom, John started acting really, really weird. And he was like, Ashley, we have to leave right now. We have to go. And she was like, what are you talking about? We haven't even finished our food. Are you okay? And he was like, no, no, we just have to go. I already paid. It's fine. Let's just, let's just go. Please, let's go. So they leave the restaurant and then they're walking down the street and John started telling Ashley, for the past eight months, I've been followed and I'm still being followed. And that's why we had to leave the restaurant because there are people there that were watching us and my life is in danger. And now I think that your life is in danger too. I have to do part two. Part two. So John and Ashley are walking down the street and he's telling her like, I, I just, I needed to tell you because I, I think your life might be in danger now too because you just hung out with me. And I just needed you to know like just in case. So Ashley ended up coming back to my place after that whole thing happened. And she told me what happened because she was genuinely freaked out. And we couldn't figure out whether John was just mentally unstable or whether this is this was actually true because he was fine up until that halfway point at dinner so we just couldn't figure it out so then what we decided to do is call ashley's brother tom because tom also knew john so we wanted to get his opinion on it like what he thought was going on whether john was okay or whether there was something going on um so we decided to call john through ashley's phone so we do a facetime audio call and when we call a woman answered the phone and she was like, wait, 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 Ashley, Ashley, hold on one second. Ashley, don't hang up the phone. Don't hang up the phone, Ashley. One second, one second, one second. So Ashley then hung up the phone and I was like, that didn't sound like your brother. And she was like, I don't know who that was. I have to do a part three. Part three. So we were really freaked out because we were like, who answered that phone call? Because Ashley did not recognize that voice. So what we decided to do was contact Tom through my phone. So we contacted Tom and he was like, no, my, my phone didn't ring. I don't know what you're talking about. And we were like, well, does someone have access to your iCloud? Like, could someone have signed in? And he was like, no, no one has my password. And we were like, well, is your computer on somewhere? And like someone answered it from your computer because it rang on your computer. He was like, no, my computer's off. I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. So Tom then looked at his phone log on his phone and it said, FaceTime audio call answered on another device. So someone had intercepted that call, basically. So what we think happened is what John was saying was true, and these people didn't want like didn't want Ashley to tell Tom what happened, so they intercepted the call. That's the only explanation that we have because we don't know who else answered this phone call. I mean it could be a coincidence, but what are the odds that this one time that we call Tom, someone else picks up and how did they know Ashley's name? They knew it was they kept saying Ashley hold on after Part four. So that woman who intercepted that phone call knew Ashley's name. And she kept saying, Ashley, hold on. Ashley, don't hang up the phone. Ashley, Ashley, one second, one second. So like, it's as if they were trying to keep Ashley on the phone to track her location. Maybe, I don't know. It was just really weird. But what's very, very weird on top of all of this is I shared this story on TikTok in August. And the day that I shared it, I got an Instagram friend request from Ashley's mom. But the thing is, I was already friends with Ashley's mom on Instagram. This was a second account. And the second account messaged me saying, hey, what are you up to? So I was like, that's weird. Let me just message Ashley and like ask her if her mom made a second Instagram account. So I messaged Ashley and she was like, no, that's an imposter account. That's not my mom. What are the odds that the day I shared that story on TikTok, there was a fake Instagram account from her mom? Also, her mom isn't a, like her mom has 100 followers on Instagram. Why would someone pretend to be her? As long as she's a celebrity and there's like imposters. It's just really weird. Until yesterday. Which is really weird because I posted this story like what, two days ago and something weird happens to me yesterday. 
it could be completely unrelated because I'm, I live in a city and these things happen all the time, I think. So this could have nothing to do with the story, but I'll still tell you what happened just so you know, because it's a bit weird. Um, so yesterday I was in my flat with my neighbor cause we were hanging out and it was three o'clock in the afternoon. So it was daytime and we're hanging out. And then suddenly a car alarm starts going off and it was going off and off and off and off. And after a while I was like, I feel like that's my car. I feel like that's my car alarm that's going off. And he was like, are you sure? And I was like, I don't know. I just feel like that's my car. So he was like, okay, let's just go down and see. So we go down together and we go to the street because my car is parked, on, parked in the street because I live in London. And we go up to my car and yes, it was my car alarm that was going off. So we were like trying to figure out why it was going off. And we're like looking at the car. And then we noticed that the driver's door was open. It wasn't like wide open. If this is how it's supposed to be when it's closed, it was like that. Like it was like open a little bit. And so I was like, weird, okay. So like we're looking at the door and then we see that, you know how if this is the window and then this is the car door, this part in between, it was kind of like opened like that. So it's as if someone put a bar in there and pulled it and that's how they opened it. I don't know. I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's how it works, but that part was like sticking out. I don't know how to really explain it. Um, anyway, nothing was stolen. Not that there was anything in my car to begin with, but like nothing, everything in the car seemed like it was the same. So it was just really weird that someone tried to break in on a Sunday at three o'clock, like when there's people around, I don't know. It's very weird. Again, it could be completely unrelated. I live in a city, but also, why? Why on a Sunday? Why not in the middle of the night when there's no one around? Um, also, I know my car was locked because A, the alarm was ringing. So it was ringing because someone opened the door. And B, my car doesn't lock if all the doors aren't closed. So all the doors were closed when I locked it. So someone definitely did open that door. I dated this guy that lied to me about his name, where he lived, literally everything. Now this guy was super jealous, so he would always make us keep our snap maps on. And he also wanted to start his own construction business, so I had helped him just kind of get it started and up and running. Well, a little bit into us dating, he had asked me if he could use my truck to take to work, and I told him no because I had an ex-boyfriend that did that and it just didn't really end up well and I don't feel comfortable with that. But he gave me this big sob story about how his truck wasn't even starting and so he was missing out on a lot of job opportunities because of it. So I ended up giving in and one day when he had taken my truck to work, I noticed he was an hour away from where we were living. Now I thought he was probably just on a job, but I texted him and I was like, hey, where are you at? And he told me he was back at his house just picking some things up. I was like, oh, that's weird. It says you're in this town an hour away from where you told me you lived. And he told me the Snap Maps probably just didn't update because he was in that town, but now he's back at home. Now I knew Snap Maps wasn't 100% accurate because he would always accuse me of cheating when I was at work saying it showed me at a location like Panda Express instead. But I was really suspicious. So whenever he told me he was at home, I started to check his Snap Maps and noticed it was always a different location. But then I get a message from some girl on Facebook saying, hey, is this your boyfriend? And I was like, oh, that's so weird. I'm actually dating a guy with that same name, but he has a different last name. So she sends me a picture of this guy and she was like, is this him? So immediately my blood's boiling and I was like, yeah, why? What's up? And she was like, well, he's been coming to my hometown and been picking me up in this really nice truck he said he just bought. She said she found me because she checked his Facebook and noticed that it was my truck and just thought I should know. So immediately I text him and I'm like, okay, I know you're cheating on me. I need my truck back right now. He was like, I'm on a job right now. I can't bring it back right now. Well, I had to work both of my jobs that day, so I wasn't going to be home until 11 p.m. that night. So I just texted him and I was like, I need the truck back at my house by 11 p.m. 11.15 rolls around and he's still not there, so I call the cops. 15 minutes later, the cops do show up, but he had pulled into my driveway just before the cops got there. When he got out of my truck, I asked him for the keys to my truck and he told me he didn't have them. I was like, okay, then how did you drive the truck here? I know you have them. I want my keys. And so when the cops get there, I ask them to get my keys back from him. But the cops say that they're not allowed to search him. And this guy is talking with the cops, laughing, and just kind of making me seem like I'm just some crazy ex-girlfriend. So the cops do escort him off the property. And since I didn't have the keys to my truck, I couldn't drive it for a while. But when I did get new keys made, I tried to start my truck and it wouldn't start. Come to find out. 
He must have came back that night and took the battery out of my truck, I'm guessing put it in his, and then put his battery in the bed of my truck. So not only did I have to pay for new keys, I had to pay to get a new battery put in. I know, I used to date the worst men and I was the biggest pushover, but not anymore. So this girl I met at a party ends up pretending to be me and ends up drugging a guy. Let me start from the beginning. So I meet this guy at a party and I end up giving him my phone number. Now, I didn't give him my Snapchat, my Instagram, nothing like that. Well, I guess a couple days after that party, a girl had requested him on Snapchat. And the username was my name. And through Snapchat, she even tells him that she is me. So they're talking back and forth for a couple days and she invites him over to hang out. But when he shows up at her house, he realizes that she's not me. So right away, he starts questioning her. And she was like, just come in, let me explain. So he does. And she goes on to tell him that she's just super insecure and she saw me and him talking at that party and she just thought it was the easiest way to get to know him. And he's telling her, you know, you're so beautiful, you don't have to pretend to be anyone else. But after this, he starts to get up to leave. And I guess she's like, well, just stay and watch a movie with me, have a glass of wine, let's just hang out and talk. So he accepts. And after one glass of wine, he ends up blacking out. So she drugs him. When he came to, she was on top of him. He notices that he's not wearing a condom and just feels super dirty about the whole situation. About a week after the situation, me and him are hanging out. And it's after the bar, we're back at his house, we're just chilling, and he's acting super weird. And finally, he was like, I just need to tell you something. And I'm like, okay, you know, tell me. And he keeps like going back on it like, no, I shouldn't tell you. And I'm like, trust me, I have been through everything. You can talk to me. I can tell he felt a lot of shame by the situation. But finally, he ends up telling me the whole story. It took a lot of us talking for me to even convince him that he was essayed. He was like, well, you know, I would have done it anyway. And I told him, well, you didn't get to make that decision for yourself, which means you were essayed. And I think that's a common problem for a lot of victims, male or female. They feel like, oh, well, you know, I would have done it or I kind of wanted it or I put myself in that situation. No. If it wasn't consensual, it was essay. I don't think we talk enough about the men who also experience this. I feel like men feel a lot of shame. Like they're taught that they're supposed to just always want it. And sex is a cool thing and to get it is cool. I've even heard a lot of stories of guys being young and being essayed by a much older woman. And a lot of times they'll be like, well, you know, she was a cougar, like it was cool. No, it wasn't cool. I think it's important that we speak out on both sides of this issue and that we don't make men feel like they can't speak on their emotions and they should just suppress them. Because this is an issue with men and women. This is an issue with society and it's not something we should take lightly. Pressuring someone into it is not okay. Forcing someone into it is not okay. These are not things that should have to be said. They should just be known. So me and my boyfriend at the time had went to this concert and my boyfriend told me that once the concert started, he was going to stop drinking because he wanted to be able to drive his car back home. So I'm like, okay, yeah, that's cool. So after the concert ended, like he said, he got in the driver's seat, he's driving us both home. And pretty much right after we get out of the concert, he was like, oh, I'm really not feeling good. I need a pullover, you need to drive. And I'm like, babe, I cannot drive. I have been drinking this whole concert. Like I am not okay to drive, I can't drive. And we keep arguing back and forth because he's like, I really don't feel good enough to drive. And I'm like, well, suck it up because I'm not good enough to drive. Finally, I get frustrated and I get in the driver's seat. Such a stupid mistake on my part and I'll never do this again. But what I didn't know is he saw that there was a DUI checkpoint coming up and I didn't see it. So if you know anything about me, I'm literally the world's worst liar. I just don't lie because I'm not very good at it. So we pull up to this DUI checkpoint and the cop asks us, have you guys been drinking? My dumbass says yes. I'm like, yeah, and then I correct myself and I'm like, oh, well, I stopped drinking before the concert so I could drive him home. And the cop is just like, oh, my wife always does that for me. That's so sweet. I'm still thinking I was going to go to jail for even drinking at all because that's illegal. This freaking cop lets us go. So we drive on through and I am pissed. And I'm like, okay, now are you gonna drive? He was like, whoa, it's, they're still back there. Like, just keep driving. It'll look suspicious. I'm like, what part of I am too drunk to drive do you not get? First off, you completely set me up. You knew that that DUI checkpoint was coming up. And he was like, yeah, but I've already had a DUI before. And I just knew if you got in trouble, it would be a slap on the wrist. At this point, I was just so frustrated. I literally just pulled the car over and got out. And I was like, if you don't get in the front seat, I'm getting an Uber home. Which is what I should have done from the start. 
But I guess I like to learn all my lessons the hard way.